morning, everybody. I'm out here cutting some sheetrock. Let me let you check it out. See what you think. Handyman Vin here. There it is. Cutting all this out right here. All the way around. But listen, I'm going to tell you what not to buy with this piece of junk right here. You see this piece of junk? Don't ever buy one of these. It's called Stanley Fat Max. It's one of these self loading things that doesn't work. See this? Look at this action I got on this piece of shit. Look at this. Doesn't do anything. Piece of garbage. They just want you to go back and get another one. It's got this lock on here. Doesn't do a thing. Doesn't do anything. You, you see, look, the blade comes out. I mean, it, it's a piece of garbage. So listen, when you're doing a doing a sheetrock job, stay with the tradi traditional one to screw in here. That, that's all you need. You, you, you don't need this, this fancy stuff. This thing opens up in the back here. Let me show you real quick. Opens up. It's got blades in there. I mean, it looks good and everything, but it's a piece of garbage. I forgot what I paid for it, but take my advice. Don't ever buy one. All right. Talk to you later. <clears throat> okay. It happens to be a Saturday afternoon, April the 26th, 2014. That's what it is. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to uh, Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host, uh, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21. And I would just like to say thank you very much for, t in regards to the Iron Man venting Vinnie Blake for his. Uh, very well made uh, consumer advocate video at the beginning of this show with the uh, the so-called new and improved Stanley um, sheetrock cutter or you know or utility uh, cutter where he was brand new right a new gadget he's tr he's pushing a button and the damn blade is not coming out it's not doing anything and then he went and used the old uh, fashion Stanley uh, cutter and it comes out and cuts fine so this is what happens when something is supposedly new and improved new and improved does not always mean new and improved new and improved is only to sell more aesthetics when, aesthetics you mean well when something when something is going good uh -huh. you got a product it's selling well right etc etc et there's nothing wrong with it bum, bum, bum. it's like mr. clean mr. clean has so many clean things how clean associated could, with him how, how clean could you possibly get he's got the stupid sponge he's got the, <laughs> uh, something in a bottle he's got this that and the other thing and then he goes all around the world throw gimmicks for to to, 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 to to see how people clean things and make them just make one product okay it, it, that it, cleans well. Because, That's all. because corporate America is, is, con is constantly, constantly coming up with ideas that change the, in some way either the look of their uh, backbone, uh, uh, basic uh, uh, priority, uh, you know, product. Their, their, uh, um, what made them popular? What made them money? They take what they have, what, what works, and they constantly change it in some way. It's like a, with computers and an operating system or a browser. Microsoft, like yeah. Like with Microsoft. What the like, hell did they have to change XP for? You know, you know what's, what I liked about XP? Even though people are telling me it's a dinosaur, it's a dinosaur. Oh yeah. Let me tell you something. I could click on start and easily go to search with XP. Click on uh, all files and folders, and I could locate anything and get rid of it if it happens to be embedded on my PC. But with the uh, the newer operating systems, you got to jump through hoops and search. You you need a search just to find the search. 
Uh, yeah. Anything that was uh, needed updating with XP, they could have updated it. They had no need to make Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 9, 10, 11, 12, or 14, whatever's going to come next. I give you one That's guess. What it I is. give you one guess why. Yes, exactly. No, 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 no. The evils and greed of capitalism. Of capitalism. <coughs> Excuse me. I would like to now get over the formalities of uh, piping aboard my illustrious co host and mentor and the very founder of uh, Newsletter Censored in 1977 with my authentic bosun's whistle. Here come the bosuns. Welcome aboard our hard-hitting truth, uh, starshipped, censored, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. good. I'm up for the fight. I'm up for the fight. That's right. And Rocky, we, I'm and, up for the fight. And we should be up for the fight because uh, what's going on this week is quite upsetting. Mm -hmm. And I will get it over with. When I read this. Okay, um, of course we are going to have, uh, I am going to visit and chat with our uh, voiceover artist, very own uh, William H. Morrow III later on, uh, after we take our lunch break. So we have, we have a double treat. Today was the debut of a fine new member of our consumer advocate team for uh, Mega Life 21 and uh, uh, venting Vinnie Blake. Uh, by the way, yes, uh, and now might, William Morrow, huh? You might want to inform our guests that yeah. uh, there is con some construction going oh, on shit. and might interfere with the show a bit. Uh, oh, lovely. Lovely. The, the guy next door is doing some home improvement. It depends how loud it is. We may have to... It ain't going to be that loud. It's not going to be that it's, loud. It's screwdriver. Oh, oh, oh. You mean like... Yeah. All right. Electric screwdriver. Okay. Here we go. Um, you know, um, in recently, in Florida City, Florida, uh, they have a new law where the homeless cannot cannot uh, have with them their possessions in public, yeah. and uh, they're, they're homeless, the the possessions of the homeless in Florida City, which happens to be in a red state, which is Florida. Okay, in order for the homeless to get back their possessions, they have to pay a fee to Florida City. Um, that interesting. Is, that is the most stupid thing, requiring money from a poor person. Well, it's like... You it's, can see how mean-spirited yeah. that stuff it's is. It's just like with South Carolina uh, making homelessness illegal, so they have an excuse to call you a vagrant and arrest you and have you work for free like a, like a slave for a privatized prison. And what, what, this see, what this is like... I mean, what this shows me is that conservatives uh, want, uh, 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 their plan is the criminalization of the poor. Exactly. The criminalization of the poor. There are 60 cities, I think, now that have laws against the poor. 60 across so the So it's United illegal States. to be poor, but it's, it's not traitorous, traitorous and un, uh, unpatriotic for American companies in corporate America to send U.S. jobs overseas. And to keep, that's fine, right? And to keep the money over there so that they don't have to pay taxes. Here. That's an, oh, and it's and it's not it's not unpatriotic and traitorous to avoid paying uh, your fair share of federal income taxes if you're rich or if you are a corporate CEO or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's okay. Oh, yeah. But but to be poor and flat broke and ho or homeless. Oh, that's a crime. That's a crime. That's just an excuse. And just like with marijuana usage. They're excuses to fill the privatized prisons with free labor. And it's all your fault. 
Whose fault? The poor. Oh, it's your that fault. They're poor. Yes. Oh, really? Yes. Where are the jobs? Because they're lazy. They're lazy. Oh, really? Yeah. Where are the jobs? And for every job, there's three applicants, or more. I think there's a lot more than that. Yeah. Uh, uh, three so, is forget yeah. it. I think there's a lot more than that. Oh, uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about here is interesting. The Koch brothers, otherwise known as the Koch suckers. Oh no, that's the people who uh, who uh, abide by them. The cock, the Koch suckers. Those are the the sycophants exactly. that, that kiss yes. that that kick the that kiss the Koch's asses. Yes. They kowtow to the Koch brothers. Yes. The Koch brothers have decided that solar energy is getting a wee bit too popular. Oh yeah. And it's cutting into their uh, I guess oil uh, revenue. Their oil revenues, yes. their big oil profits. So the Koch brothers are now trying to push for a solar tax. They want to tax the sun. Ha ha another another ridiculous uh, uh, concept, but it doesn't surprise us. Hey, I got another ridiculous concept. They want to tax the sun. Uh, uh, why don't we tax uh, uh, the, the buying and, and uh, 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 selling of stocks and bonds? Capital gains? No, oh. that, that, that we already tax, but on a low level. No, I'm talking about when you buy a stock, you pay a quarter penny or a half penny oh, okay. or something, you know, you right. tax. You can raise trillions of dollars. Right. Yeah, they call, I hear they you. call that stupid, but not what you were just talking about. Want to tax the sun? What's what's next to private? Well, they already want to privatize the, the world's drinking water, and what? What's hey, wait a minute! Nestle owns that. What's next? Uh, privatizing the air we breathe. Hey, I said that years ago. You know, once upon a my time, my grandfather used to say that. Once upon a time, it, it was, it was. You wouldn't believe that there would be such a thing being sold as bottled water. My grandfather flipped out. When cable TV was first invented, my grandfather flipped out. You want me to pay to watch television? Are you out of your mind? Hey, you, got you want me to pay for water? Are you, you out got, of your mind? You got Tesla over here wanting to give free electricity to everybody. When, right. we, had, when we had free television over the air, <laughs> they turned it into cable. <laughs> oh, man. Jeez. Now you now you have satellite radio, which is another fee. Another. Fee. If you want to listen to something yes. good, you got to pay for that. Yes. And uh, now the the greedy, uh, 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 pompous, arrogant um, uh, Vince McMahon of the WWE, he has now the WWE Network, which uh, has a fee of like ten dollars a month. Now he's got a promotion. Oh, for television. No, on on on. Uh, Streamed internet. on the internet. Now he's got a promo going where he's giving away one week for free. Ooh, how generous of Vince McMahon. Hey, remember, Vince McMahon has some good qualities and some very bad qualities. The one of the good qualities, remember back when the wrestling was regional? It was uh, the territories. Territories, yes. He got did away with that. He put it on on major network. National. He went national, like Jesse Ventura said. He went right. national, and uh, and then national became international. And uh, you know the problem with el eliminating the territories is you don't have too many promoters to work for. <laughs> well, that's probably one of the reasons he just wanted to be the top king, the kingpin. Well, why do you, you know? why do you think he had his wife running for state senate? I think right, <laughs> state senate in Connecticut, Linda Lunchbox McMahon. Yeah, because Connecticut was going to do some kind of a law that would have interfered with Mr. McMahon's productivity and life or something. So he wanted her in there. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure it had to do what what's good for business. Exactly. What's good versus what's bad for. His business. Yeah, bad for the rest of us. When you say good for business, he's not talking about what's good for mom and pop stores on, on Main Street. No, it's what's good for the fat cats. Him. Yes, exactly. That's why he, he, he backed her up with the campaign with, mm. with, with Moolah, with his own money. And the 500 uh, extra jobs that was created in Connecticut by them were probably low-paying, low-end. Putting up the ring. 
Yeah. Uh, taking down, taking down, and putting up the ring. Like roadies, right? Yeah. Yeah. Low level. Gophers, go get this, Gophers. go do that, get this, that, get that. That's right. The only difference is they pay them with the independent circuit pro wrestling promoters. They screw you. They yeah. they they don't pay you. But yeah, yeah. interns. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> interns. Now an intern yeah. is uh, is another scam. Uh -huh. Besides arresting people for stupid things and having them work for free, an intern could be a um, a, uh, a a soon to be graduating student from a tech school, and you're giving them college. You're giving them school credit mm. by having them work for free. Mm -hmm. And then when they graduate, guess what? They get more students from the school and more students from the school. So it's an e ever en never ending flow of free labor for businesses and professions. Yeah, and then scam. And then they turn into adjunct professors, which you exploit. It's total capitalism has become total and complete exploitation of of people that are not financially independent and are not well, part of the one percent that's why this movie uh, Tesla and like Tucker the man and his machine or whatever these two movies present capitalism in its bare light Tesla died penniless in poverty okay because when he was in his prime or whatever he had to go to somebody and beg them for money for a laboratory so that he can conduct his experiments and stuff. Right. That's how it is. You see? The person with the ideas, the person without the money, has to go to somebody who has the moolah. And if that person with the moolah doesn't want to give the moolah. Right. The person with the ideas vegetates and becomes nothing. That's one of the big problems with capitalism. And then there's that exploitation thing about the, 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 the employer never being able to pay the employee what he's truly worth. Yeah, living wage. Okay. Not a living wage, what he's truly worth. What he's really worth, That's correct. which is a lot higher than $10.10 .10 an hour. A lot higher because yeah. the, the employee has to make more for the employer than the employer pays the employee yeah but isn't it isn't it uh, strange or it's not strange but it, it, isn't it um, upsetting how uh, a corporate American CEO will be so much against the ten dollars and ten cent an hour which is really not enough but his own salary is astronomical that's fine or a politician in Washington, a, a congressman or a senator making 175000 a year, not counting perks. Plus fringe benefits. For hardly working, for hardly showing up at the Capitol building per month. Or a governor, you know, sucking in all that money. Oh, no, they don't make sacrifices for the good of the country. You know, the people have to make the sacrifices. And uh, just like Jesse Ventura said, he quoted his father, why uh, why would somebody spend let's say a million dollars to get elected a job that's only going to pay 175,000 right 100,000 why would they spend millions to get a job that's only going to pay in this case 175,000 <laughs> exactly which, give or take is the going rate to hold office yeah you know whether so we, you know there's something screwy going on here yeah they're not they're they're doing it for other reasons oh speaking of um, uh, you know, we talk quite often about how corrupt the two-party system is and how Republicans and Democrats are just two sides of the same coin. But uh, another thing Jesse Ventura said that was quite interesting, uh, when he was elected uh, governor of Minnesota on a very low budget campaign, I think it was $300,000, yeah. he told me he flat out refused to meet with any lobbyists. So that means why we're always crucifying the corporation and the CEO. But in this case, Jesse De Ventura was a governor of a state of Minnesota and he refused to meet with lobbyists, which means 
the people in Washington do not have to meet with lobbyists. Well, of course they don't. If they don't want the to. The lobbyists come in with envelopes full of money. That's why they meet with them. But it takes it's two. It's bribery. It takes two to dance the tango. They meet with them. It's bribery. But they choose to meet with them. How else are they going to get that moolah? They want that the free moolah. Yes, they want the free moolah. Yeah. And Jesse was just interested in doing what's good for the uh, people of Minnesota. Minnesota. All right. Well, that's what's missing in our government. Our government. The merits of the people that are running and not the political party. Now, like, and we're going to get into him, in, in, you know, in our readings here. Mm. Mr. Bundy. Yeah, I'm done. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Bundy. I'll say that. I'll Mr. say Mr. Brilliance. Mr. Bundy. Mr. Guy, the guy that's not, he sees racist, but he says he's not racist. He doesn't yeah. recognize the United States of America. Okay? So, these people that are in Washington, we have to understand something. People don't get this part of it. It's our government. The problem is with the people we've elected to represent us. Right. Not the government system itself. That can always be changed one way or another through laws and etc. Yeah. But the people, while they're there for their six years, or their two years, uh -huh. or their twenty or thirty years, they're not doing what is best for the people. Exactly. There's the problem. Well, Mr. What's his first Bundy, name? Bundy. Cliven. Mr. Cliven Bundy with the cloven hoof. <laughs> Mr. Cliven Cloven Bundy. With the airhead brain. Yeah, the, the man who uh, shows his racist tendencies, uh, uh, obviously. You know, he puts it in, 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 in a nice way, but, you know, we know where he's coming from. He's mad because his cattle can't eat for free. That's what he's well, annoyed been about. been for free for 20 years. They're freeloaders. His cattle and him are freeloaders. He free hasn't load. paid the fees in 20 years. He's got one or two court judgments against him to pay those fees and he hasn't done so because he doesn't recognize the United States of America. Well, anybody could, could get away with any shenanigans and use the same excuse as Clive and Bundy. However, Mr. Clive and Bundy has his militia friends coming in, riding on horses I with heard. the American flag, I heard, and yeah. guns at their hips, and saying that if they have to, they will put their women in front of them as human shields. What? Much like the terrorists do and did. They yeah. used the poor women and children and guess what as happened? shields. A few days ago. I know, there was a standoff. The, the Federalists backed off. They backed down and went away. This will inspire all the other militias. Correct! Well, uh, I, I hate to say it, but I think if this plutocracy, this, uh, this corporate, corporatist fascism gets too out of hand, I think that the, uh, these good old boys out there might be our new heroes. Not these. Oh no, not them. These are these are right wing. Uh, what would you call them? Right wing paramilitaries or pa uh, right wing? They're they're uh, what are they? white supremacists. That's what they. Yeah, we don't need more of them. Clear and simple. Just like Mr. Bundy. Mr. Bundy showed us. It's been done before by others too. But they show you exactly what a conservative is in his heart. That's what they are. Well, they're very racist. They're very hateful people. And etc. They're very intolerant, hateful people. They don't believe in multiculturalism. And we get and and, and you know once the Republicans run away from them, like Sean Hannity is right now and the other ones that you, that backed him at first, then now they're backpedaling. You know, get away from him. But what happens is, this is exactly who they are. 
Well, they tell you this. They show you this. Well, that's that's. We still accept them. Well, that's why I've always. And then we forgive them. That's why I've always said that. Uh, one thing about Republicans and teabaggers is they're very obvious in their agenda and how they feel. They they don't they don't beat around the bush to tell you how they re really feel about things. Like I can assure you right now, Mr. Bundy. The Republicans have sent in some PR people yeah. to speak to Mr. Bundy so that he will not be making these mistakes in the future. That he will be able to speak a little more camouflageable, if that's such a word. But they want to turn Clive and Bundy into another, uh, what was that guy's name? Joe the Plumber? Larry the Plumber? <laughs> Joe, was that Joe? I think it was Plum Joe the Plumber. Was Joe the Plumber? Yeah, something like that. He was uh, some stooge for yeah. the Republicans, <laughs> talking on. He was a citizen speaking on their behalf. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He, he didn't want to be taxed, or whatever. Is that what he was Come bitching on, about? Come on, man. Well, how much is he making to be paying taxes? We're not interested in Joe the Plumber. Uh. We're interested in the big boys who aren't paying their fair share of taxes. That's where the money is. And that's where it should be. You in know, they're the, the government. They're, they're 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 they worry more about feeding the cattle than they are about giving food stamps to poor families and their children. Bingo! They care more about something that'll that will bring them profit, like I, feeding the cattle. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> they present it constantly to us. Paul Ryan does it how many times already? And they give him plenty of face time too. Exactly, and then they and then they make excuses for oh and no, Paul, he don't know the poor. And he's the media, a, and the media, the and the media never challenges these Republicans, and and it's like, and they keep on calling the media the liberal media. Yeah. How could they be the liberal media if they give Republicans so much face time and that nobody challenges them? Exactly. Nobody rebuttals it them. Never has been the liberal medium, believe me. Media, yeah. Media, medium. Medium rare? Medium. Mm, I psychic. like my ribeye steak medium rare. I don't need no psychic to tell me and show me what a conservative is really like. You don't need a psychic, I to, don't need a psychic. to see through exactly. a conservative. Well, you don't even have to see through them. They tell you. It comes right out of their own mouth. Yeah, you don't need to be clairvoyant yeah. to, to know what their agenda is. Jeez, man. You know, they're very... Um, they're very straightforward in your face about how why, they feel. Along with welfare cowboy, in Bundy's case, why is nobody calling him a terrorist? He doesn't recognize the United States of America. No, oh, yeah. Why is that yeah. not a terrorist? Yeah, how, but how come, how co and how could a, a uh, confrontational child be considered a potential terrorist by the NSA, but Mr. Bundy is not a terrorist? Exactly. Not yet? Exactly. Well, with the Republican Congress, he probably won't be considered a terrorist. Mm. Oh, but a confrontational child is a potential terrorist. Yeah, the heck of them. You've heard that in the news recently, about the confrontational child? Yeah. Huh. They had a handcuff him. They did? Yeah. How, how, how old was the kid? I think 11, something like that. <laughs> you kidding me? In school. Me. was in school. They handcuffed the 11-year-old kid. What was he confrontational about, though? You're talking about the one in school or the one at the TSA? I think there was a, a situation at the TSA, too, with a young child or something, where the, they overreached the TSA or whatever. So I guess this means that uh, the next uh, major protest, everybody will be arrested. Just for protesting. Uh, the next major protest will probably be prevented because they had the goods on everybody. Unless, unless the next major protest will not be a uh, a peaceful sign holding protest. Maybe it'll be a bunch of Clive and uh, 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 good old boys, uh, Clive and Bundy militia, good old boys that are not there to that peacefully was, protest. That's correct. You know, because I not think not with sidearms at their side. I think the people. Um, oh yeah, they'll have sidearms. When's the last time you saw rifles and sidearms? Yeah. 
yeah, on liberals' uh, bodies, etc., at protests. Liberals are really, uh, I mean, they mean well, they really care about the planet, they care a lot about people, but man, they have no spine. <laughs> They have no backbone. Well, it's yeah, but the problem to is to pack that, heat. To pack heat. You know? The other ones are uh, the right wingers. I mean, they they they're just out to do do somebody else in. They they just want to use the ammo. Yeah. They they really are they really are itching to use their ammo. Like those that uh, like that show in Alaska when uh, you know everybody like likes to hang out in the gun store. And, and they, all they do is go and modify their guns that they have, and they 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 need more ammo. I'm here to buy more ammo. Hey, I gotta bring down a moose, baby. Well, actually, I gotta bring down a in, moose in Alaska. You you better have hunting skills because you don't have well, of course store. You don't have stores at every corner like we do here. You better know how to hunt and and dress an animal. You know, or you know, where to you know, Tommy no, Hilfiger. No, how do you dress an animal? Some million people in in in, in Canada. Alaska. There's this woman. Well, who, the population is really not much yeah. for the size of the state. There's this woman who wants the Canada and the United States to merge. You don't want to do that to Canada. That's, that's horrible. What, that's a problem. That's horrible. Exactly. I, I don't think Canadians want this. <laughs> She's out of her mind. But you know, it might be. It might be that it. it for the time being, it, it might be that, there, that that something like that might be necessary. Yeah, back because China. Yeah. And Europe are going to grow into such yeah. big uh, commercial uh, situations that yeah. maybe, maybe that who no know, who knows? Maybe it might have to include Mexico too. I mean, Quebec but, wa wants to secede from Canada. Well, there's you, another problem. French Canada, but you, could you imagine the whole country wanting to j merge with the U.S.? No. <laughs> not with those uh, kind of problems. With the politicians, with the Republicans in our country. And, and people like the Koch brothers that want to abolish Social Security and Medicare? Oh, you really, uh, and, and of course, uh, health care for all? You really want that kind of a country? I don't think the Canadians would want that. Well, that's the thing, though. It might, be, it might become a self-defense type situation with China and Europe growing so large a trading yeah, but, commercial but we created the, the Godzilla over there in China we created the monster in China. no kidding mm -hmm. mr. Galdang Nixon and then he person and Reagan with Soviet Union uh, tear here's, down that wall let Mr. Me Gorbachev. Please, let me please get this through to people Reagan did not bring down the wall Pope John the two did with Poland and Solidarity Union. That's what broke the Soviet Union. And Reagan took credit for it. Exactly. And that's what people better start understanding. They're Reagan also took credit for a big economy. Uh, supposedly he produced 16 million jobs. Oh, really? Clinton's, Clinton's, Clinton uh, uh, produced over 23 million. Well, during that air traffic controller strike, all he did was was trash the unions for everything. Ronald fired Reagan. them all. Huh? He fired them all. They all got fired. Because they were a public union, not a private. Oh, so they're not supposed to Is this strike. similar to Chris Christie being against the teachers union? Yes. And not wanting a union at all? That's correct. All unions. So teachers can Conservatives work... Conservatives are against all unions. So teachers can work like fast food uh, employees, perhaps? And, 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 and go to college, go to school for uh, chump change, for chicken feed. Conservatives are against all unions except the NRA. So people should go to work for chump change, unlike them and their rich friends. That's correct. It's okay for them to make a lot of loot, That's a lot right. of a lot of money. That keeps it siphoning up, eh? Oh, 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 where's my oh. siphon? Siphon up. Economics never trickle down, people. Siphon up, as you can see, this is a real siphon. Siphon up economics to the one percent to the fat cats. Yeah, yeah. All right, ah, oh, me siphon, I love it. I have more. I, I, I use one for my aquarium, you know. This is the our official talk show siphon. Wonderful. Political siphon. Wonderful.
People, All right. People don't get that though. That that's what has been happening. I for think for 30, 40 years. Exactly. And and a Republican is such a conniver and liar and and they do whatever it takes to increase their profit it's all about them it's a selfish selfishness is a virtue to them it's all like that goes back to that bitch of a witch iron rand it's total selfishness it's 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 everything that that, that is part of satan satan's world the devil's economics is conservative, corporatist, ideology, capitalism. Yes, of course. And their ideology, which is never proven. Okay, we must sink our teeth into these readings. You dig where I'm coming from, brother? I'm digging it, man. I'm digging it, man. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. <laughs> oh, Michelelli. Ever since President Eisenhower added those two words to our Pledge of Allegiance during my teen years, I have objected on many grounds, primarily because it is against the constitutional separation of church and state. Rather than suing anyone, I simply keep my mouth closed while others say, under God, and continue on after. Wow. Yes, I do think that we should go back to the original, and I am glad that some groups are objecting on constitutional grounds. But calling it discriminatory is going further than necessary. You think God would approve of everything the United States is doing throughout the world? I don't think so. So I don't God know about does not approve of any, any, any A N Y politics. He's not on anybody's side if None. it has to do with political politics of any kind. As Wilhelm Reich has said, polit all politics is pathological. Okay. Two parties, three parties, eight parties, as many parties as you want. It's, it's my all party and I cry if I want to, cry <laughs> if I want to. <laughs> You'll cry too if it happened to you. Do, 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 do. All right, speaking of Mr. Bundy, <laughs> Bunkerville, Nevada. <laughs> Bunker. Wait, wait, wait. Is this is this the name of the town? As in Archie Bunker? Yes. Mr. Clive and Bundy. No, no. Let me do Foghorn. Hold on. I'll say that. I'll say that, son. Mr. Clive and Bundy is from Archie Bunker, Nevada. Go ahead. I'm sorry. For a while, Bunkerville. <laughs> in certain quarters. It's perfect. Clive and Bundy was celebrated as a John Wayne-like throwback. He kind of looks like that, you know. To the old west. He should get a 10-gallon hat. Oh, see He's there, wearing see one. There, see there, son. Huh? He wears one. Yeah, but is it like Hoss Cartwright's hat? Yes. And it's a 10-gallon. Hoss had a pretty tall hat. <laughs> Plain spoken rancher. Oh, yeah. Just trying to graze his cattle. That's all he's doing and keep the government off his back. My cattle are just innocently out there grazing. But that was before he started sounding more like a racist throwback. Ooh. Conservative Republican politicians and commentators <laughs> Bunkerville. <laughs> who once embraced Bundy for standing up to Washington are stampeding in the other direction. No pun intended. And branding him a racist. Branding after, him, no pun intended, branding him, okay. After he suggested that blacks might have it better as slaves. His wishful thinking on his part, maybe? The furor has made apparent how <laughs> limited Bundy's appeal may ever have been. I'll say there, son, Cliven Bundy, Clo Cloven Hoof Bundy. Bundy, 67, and his armed supporters thwarted an attempt by the U.S. Bureau of Land Management two weeks ago to seize his family's cattle over his failure to pay 
1.1 million dollars in grazing fees. So Mr. Bundy is a very well-to-do cattle rancher. He's also a criminal. Yeah, yeah. He's a welfare cowboy. Living off the government yeah, for 20 he's a, years. he's a cattle moocher. He's a rancher moocher. Moocher rancher. But I can tell you... A right jolly now, rancher too until But this I happened. can tell you he would support cuts in food stamps. For regular oh, people. regular people, uh, poor kids, and even worse, children of veterans that just came back from Iraq, Afghanistan. Uh, and veterans themselves. Them, they, yeah, veterans, veterans, not wealthy cattle ranchers, yeah. but people that poor, poor souls that were over there fighting. The local land use dispute soon turned into a national debate. <coughs> Excuse me, with conservatives calling it another example of big government overreach. But the rugged West that Bundy was said to represent was changed, becoming more urban and less concerned about federal intrusion than it was during the so-called sagebrush rebellion in the 1970s and 1980s. Right. <clears throat> in the urban areas that now dominate the West, there have been a few stirrings of support for Bundy. Even many fellow ranchers regard him more as a deadbeat than a hero. You know, the theme song to Dallas is playing over and over in my head now. You've got hundreds of ranchers in Nevada who pay their fees regularly. Hey, why can't Bundy? On the grazing fee issue, Bundy doesn't have sympathy from the ranchers. He's greedy. I, I wonder how much money he made off his cattle in 20 years. That's why I... That I, he hasn't paid his grazing fees. That's why fee. I say if he owes that much in grazing fees, he must be a very well-off cattle rancher. At the Bunkerville Post Office... Bunkerville Post Office. Ain't it, you dingbat, you? Spider. Hey, meathead, get Look, over here. Spider. Oh, I like I like the arachnids by the spiders. Uh, they, 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 they're very beneficial. Unless it's a poisonous brown recluse or a black, uh, or a black widow. Could be a black widow. My grandfather used to call them the merry widow spiders. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Uh, Back to the... <coughs> yeah, where was that? Reading. Uh, Chad Dalton, a lineman for the power company, said that the case brought up important issues, but that they should be addressed through laws, not with guns. Was a lineman for the county. It's a fight. Oh, by the way, uh, speaking of him. He's in a nursing home. He's in a nursing he home. He has Alzheimer's. Yeah. Poor well, guy. Well, he had it, but he was on tour. Glenn Campbell. His last tour, you know. Poor, poor soul. Glenn Campbell. Salute to Glenn Campbell. Back, back to the reading. It's you. a fight to be had, Mr. Dalton said, from inside a car full of his children, but I'm not sure he's the one to lead it. <clears throat> Eric Herzig, a political science professor at the University of Nevada in Reno, said Bundy was made into a hero by conservative activists and journalists in New York and Washington who did not understand how extreme Cliven Bundy is. Even among sagebrush rebels in Nevada ranches. The sagebrush rebels. In fact, the remote area outside Las Vegas where Bundy and his supporters made their stand is represented by a Democrat, Representative Steve Horsford, Okay. The congressman said, and by the way, I believe he's black. Mm. I believe he was on TV yesterday. Okay. The congressman said Friday that many of the people in the small towns in the region, which has drawn an increasing number of retirees and tourists seeking to enjoy its open spaces, are upset with Bundy, mm -hmm. who does not reflect Nevada or the views of the West. 
makes, makes me want to defrost my hellfire chili today. All this talk of Bundy and cattle ranching in the West, and and the uh, what's it what they called again the uh, desperados. The, what, what is it? Sagebrush rebels. The sagebrush rebels sound like a country western band. Hey, that's a good yeah. The BLM claims Bundy's cattle are trespassing. Yeah. on fragile habitats set aside for the endangered desert tortoise. That's right, the tortoise. The to I didn't know they were in Nevada. I thought they were in Arizona. Where the hell is the water that they go into in Nevada? Yeah, where did it? Well, Lake, Lake Mead? Well, you see, the desert tortoise in, this, in the Sonora Desert, you know, down in New Mexico, Mexico, and, and Arizona, they feed on cacti. Cacti hold water. Uh, but yeah, but they swim. No, are you? No, they're tortoise. They're terrestrial. Tortoises swim. I use uh, what? Get out of here! They do not. The big tortoises swim. They might soak in the water, soak their ass, and they might wade. They don't swim. They'll drown. They have. I'm talking about the big tortoises. They, they have elephant-like club feet. Not little turtles. I'm not talking about little tortoises. Turtles. I'm talking about. A uh, hundred pound, t uh, hundred they, year old tortoise. They do not swim. They will drown. They c they will soak in the water. They will drink water. Well, how come I but see they them don't swim in the water under the water? Not uh, not a, not a terrestrial tortoise. Well, we didn't say it was terrestrial. Wait we a minute. There's only the one kind of tortoise. tortoise. There's only one kind of tortoise. They are all terrestrial turtles. Totally. They have what no the hell way. are those ones that are swimming in the ocean? Those are sea turtles. Well, Turtle. what the hell? They're tortoises. They're turtles. They're not tortoises. They're tortoises. They're turtles. You better look it up after the show. They're turtles. This, sea turtles. This woman Aquatic. On, fa on Facebook is a proponent of those tortoises. You know what? What's and her, she calls them tortoises. What's her name? Because I'm going to tell Elisa. I'm telling her off. Well, look through it, dummy. Please. You'll see. She'll a be stupid something. ass. A t a, 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 aquatic turtles are called turtles. The word tortoise refers to a completely terrestrial turtle, which is exclusively a tortoise. They don't have any way of swimming because of their feet. Okay. Fine. But they do soak. They will soak their body. They just can't swim. Oh my Bundy God. Bundy says. Back to Bundy. Stupid from the tortai. Bundy says he doesn't <laughs> recognize federal authority over lands that his cattle have been grazed on for years. <coughs> After the BLM called off the roundup and released about 350 animals back to Bundy, the BLM is the Bureau of Land Management. Okay. That was a mistake. Why did they do that? They should have confiscated the cattle. Yeah, this this uh, federal land or state land is is like a uh, uh, like like a bird sanctuary. It, it, it's it's Yosemite, it's, uh, Yellowstone, it's our park. It's reserved for endangered desert species, indigenous endangered species, not for Clive and Bundy to uh, to make more money off his cattle. The rancher drew praise from many Republicans. Naturally. Most notably Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. Naturally. And of course then Sean Hannity. No, they, they, the, the people, the teabaggers of Fox News and all Republicans, they just care about money. They don't care about about endangered uh, uh, species or humans or children or you know or the environment what do they care they care about doing away with the United States government that is one big care that they all share in common they want to privatize the entire planet earth they want to take away our little power that we do have and and what about uh, what if you're um, uh, disabled or they don't care about that crap. Or if you're broke, or if you're a senior that's living on your social security check. 
so on and so or you're a, a, a mother without her husband trying to raise young children and do they you know, have any alternatives for Obamacare they never have any that's alternatives. that's correct but they want to do away with it right yeah the Koch and they brothers would have done away with universal health care yeah. if they could have well, the Koch brothers want to abolish everything that is a social service for the correct poor. So that means the Koch brothers don't care if the poor die. Correct. Which means why should we care about the Koch brothers' profit? Bingo. Why should we care about what's good for for, good corp for corporate America? Okay. I can care less, but 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 the damn American news media sure cares because they give them so much face time. Answer me that. It's for clear. It it answers itself. They're pussies. They're 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 cor car, uh, corporate cocksuckers. The corporations the pay the bills. If you don't have corporate money for sponsors, you don't exist. So the media cannot be like they used to be, unbiased. Tell it like it is, and let the 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 viewer decide what he wants to think. They don't do that anymore. I don't know if they ever did, but. Yeah, that's true. A possible 2016 presidential candidate, that's Rand Paul, and condemnation from several Democrats. Then, and this is the problem, when they open their mouths, mm -hmm. in an interview on Thursday in the New York Times, he suggested that the Negro might have been better off during slavery rather than on government welfare. In a statement on Friday, Bundy defended himself by saying he is trying to keep Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream alive. At an afternoon address to the media and supporters at his ranch, Bundy apologized if he had offended anyone. Oh, yeah. I might not have said it right, he said. No, but he was. But it came from my heart. Get it? They tell you the truth. Understand it. <laughs> he he was in their hearts. What he they was are racist. What he was saying was, he uh, strongly suggested that uh, black people were better off as slaves. Correct. Right. Which which means, which means racism in my book. That's correct. It, it, it's right in your face. In you, your face. You do not have to decipher it. You don't have to make excuses no. for the man and for the conservatives because in their heart they are all racist. Do you hear the word I used? All. I agree. All. Conservatives. MSNBC hosts won't say all. They will say some. No, it's not some. It's all. Period. It hasn't. It hasn't been proven to me that it's some. That's correct. Because a hundred percent of them are. When you scratch it, when you scratch the surface mm -hmm. and get under the surface, they are all racist. And of course, they all hate the poor. They hate the poor, and they're greedy as all hell. Exactly. They're very. Uh, it's like the like the old cute. The cute saying there, you know, if it sounds like a duck and walks like a duck and looks like a duck. It quacks like a duck. It's a duck. It's a duck. <laughs> John Rosenberger, 76, who said he had saw, uh, gone 25 years without paying federal taxes because he did not believe in Washington's authority, came to the ranch from Las Vegas after watching Bundy's supporters stare down the government. Oh, but it's okay for middle-class America to pay all the taxes. <laughs> and the poor. And the poor with consumption taxes, sales taxes, what have you. Oh, that's okay. The stuff that I grew up with, the cowboys, the good <coughs> guys with the white hats. The good guys, yeah, sure. Today, it's the ranchers being harassed by the government. Harassed. Harassed that they can't, um, they can't follow the rules. Rosenberger said, "Pay the fees with a revolver strapped to his hip." They are the black hats. 
Before the interview in the Times, Governor Brian Sandoval and Senator Dean Heller, Republicans, who got their political start in the sparsely populated northern end of the state, issued statements supportive of Bundy. Bundy's racial comments, however, drew bipartisan condemnation. Heller's spokeswoman said the senator completely disagrees with Mr. Bundy's remarks. Well, they have to say that. Uh, of course, they run. They, they run, run from they, it. They run from it because they, they want to get reelected. Exactly. <laughs> they don't want to alienate any uh, sector of the population. That's correct potential voters. That's correct. Even though they are trying to alienate and uh, stop the uh, the poor from voting by not having public restrooms at the at the polls. <laughs> That's okay. You know. <laughs> That's okay. Now some judge in one of the states uh, put down the uh, the try that they were doing there. So maybe that's a good sign. You know. Some states might have a a clear mind and understand what this stuff is all about. You know, that's another thing that there's two things that bother me about Republicans. Number one is that they actually have supporters. Number two, why do they have women and blacks and Latinos yeah. in their party? Sellouts. They hate them all. They have, yeah, they have, they have some minorities. They have some women, more women than than minorities. But uh, they have um, um, Latinos. They have uh, that Philippine woman from Hawaii. What's her name? Michelle Malkin or Malkin, Malkin or whatever. From you know, for the or Philippines. Is it I I a, a very poor country. Ayat from Hawaii. A poor country, huh? Senator Ayat. Yeah, what, what what gravitates them to the Republican Party? What attracts them to the Republican Party? Unless uh, there's some monetary uh, 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 money trail, there's some money trail. It's in the heart here. Well, they're they're selling out for uh, monetary gain. Uh, I mean, I can't think of any. That's the top part of it. In the heart, as I showed you with Bundy. In the heart. So there's something in here. So if they're a person of color, if they're um, part of a minority, or if they're a woman, in their heart they are really turning their backs on their own people. There's something that draws them. Sell out. <clears throat> there's something that draws them. Which is, is not which is not on the surface. There's something that draws okay. uh, the 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 uh, the tea baggers that live out west that don't have a pot to piss in, and they vote Republican. Yeah, well, yeah, but they were the, the trouble with the Tea Party is they were taken over by the Cokies and the other ones. You know, they were taken over. There are those Cokies. Their little legitimate yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. agenda and and, yeah. and, 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 and criticisms right. or whatever. They were all knocked down. Yeah. The Cokies and all of them put in the money, and now they they own them. They own the Tea Party. You imagine how miserably, ultimately selfish the Koch brothers are. Anybody who wants this world domination based on greed, you know, it's like. And guess what? What? Uh, I think it's in New York. Mister, I think it's David Kochi. He's got his name on a big building or whatever. Really? Yeah. Is something like uh, you know, like uh, Lincoln Center. Uh, you know, he's got a na his name on something of that nature. They should get a something too. They should get a a group from Occupy Wall Street to protest that building. It's his already done. Be. It's done. It's done. You don't have time to protest these things. And as I said, protests mean nothing today. I hear the Democrats are ahead in the polls for. Uh, for, uh, they November. certainly better be because if the Republicans take the Senate, kiss your ass. We're dead. Kiss your ass goodbye. We're dead. Okay? Kiss, kiss your ass goodbye. The poor might as well just uh, 
take cyanide and just uh, cease to exist or something. Oh, but that would be good for the Republicans, wouldn't it? They would want that. Yes, they would. Want hey, that. but 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 if there's enough American uh, morons to re-elect them, like the people here in New Jersey re-elected Chris Christie, uh -huh. which is the stupidest thing. But I it mean, happened. I mean, there can't be there can't be that many rich people in New Jersey to re-elect Chris Christie. No, the re the Democrats did it. It's, a, you know, I, I can't make sense out of this, Bill. I cannot make sense. Of, of course. I like to think logically. See this guy up here, old man Spock. I like to think logically in life and make intelligent decisions based on common sense and logic. That's not logic, kind of Captain. People that are not wealthy re-electing a Republican is not logical. No, it isn't. Doesn't make but sense. But politics is pathological. So how yeah. can it be logical? Human human nature is so screwy and difficult to understand and complex. It's uh, are you done with that reading? Yes. Are you done? Okay. Is it time for your little lunchy? Almost. How we don't much have time, time we got? for another All right. Reading. We'll we'll yeah, we'll, we'll, sure. we'll we'll cut. You know? It is time uh, for the uh, Reverend Doctor William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight, known as lunch. We are going to break now, and uh, I will be. Uh, meeting with right after this, mm -hmm. I will be meeting with our voiceover um, artist William H. Morrow the third for our little show, and then after that, we will have our promo commercial, and then we will return uh, with the uh, balance of this week's show. Uh, the balance. The balance. Okay, we're here with William uh, H. Morrow, uh, a commercial uh, a voiceover artist. Now, we were talking the other day on today's modern parenting where they spoil, coddle, and treat their children as being special. What is special, like you asked me? I can't answer you. What does it mean? Does it mean they're, they're better than other what kids? Is, what is why, why is your child special? And then if a child has a, a problem, uh, a disability that's special as well. Handicap is special so who, too. Yeah. Could you tell me who isn't special? <clears throat> yeah, they're 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 better than other <coughs> other kids. They're, are they gifted? Are they who naturally is, talented? You know. Who is who isn't special? Please, somebody to answer me. Please. Yes. Or just the fact that they have a lot of money that automatically makes their child with a silver spoon in his mouth special. I mean, because well, it's it, almost like you, you uh, many times society equates somebody with wealth as a genius. So you're going to tell me, uh, excuse me, a child with Down syndrome inherits two hundred billion dollars. Is he suddenly a genius? Okay, let's be honest. Based okay. on the fact I'm that I'm not he trying to be cruel. Yeah. I feel for everybody. As you well know, all these decades of knowing me. But let's be fair. The terminology we're trying to give the people in society, we're terming, we're putting terms on everything. Yeah. It's got to stop. It really has to stop. Yeah, pe people, no one Let's is truthful, special yeah. and better than anyone Nobody's else. Nobody's special. You've got to go out and make yourself special. What do you mean you're special? Well, what about these these kids from rich neighborhoods? You were telling me a story about uh, Ridgewood, New Jersey, but this. Um, it's like, let's say a, a kid is in Little League Baseball and his parents, they're, they think they're upper class and, and they're yelling. And therefore, he's entitled to get more playing time. And they're yelling at Did their... Did you ever think your child sucks? Yeah, he's on the bench and they for have, a reason. they have hired private detectives to sit in the stands at basketball games on the sidelines of baseball with stopwatches and they time the amount of minutes of playing time their child gets. And they... They, they whine and complain to the board or what have you. We've had a principal quit and some coaches quit over this. And I think it's ridiculous. Again, to repeat what I said about 30 seconds earlier, did you ever think your son just sucks? Yeah. If he was that good, he'd be playing. Instead of yelling at the coach and yelling at the umpire. Why isn't my son getting more daughter? Let's be honest, it's both sexes, I'm sure. Why isn't my son or daughter getting more playing time? What is the reason? <laughs> well, I'm sure, let's be fair too. I'm sure, and I encountered it, politics in high school. I'm sure there's politics, I'm sure there's favoritism, and maybe your son or daughter just sucks too. Right. It, it's a combination of three or four factors. Let's be fair here. Or maybe they don't, you know? they don't deserve 
or maybe they're not qualified for a scholarship. Maybe the rich kid really is not that smart. Well, I would like to know if they follow their child and do the same thing when the son enters college somewhere. Do you hire a private detective to go down there as in the stands too? Yeah. Oh, or unless, I guess college is a little bit different where if you're not good enough, you don't make the team. So then what do you do? Yeah. So Which is I got why I guess some kids that choose Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, uh, the colleges or universities, what have you. Well, if a kid gets low SAT scores, well, does the rich parents... That's a whole different topic. The SATs are found to be BS, basically, now. Oh, it really okay. is. That's a whole different topic. But go ahead with what you're saying. Well, well, I mean, I'm sure these parents with the big bucks, these, these parents would give the school system a hard time because their child is not being favored in any way. Well, because they automatically think that, that, ch that, that talented intelligent children my son, my son, can be uh, made. He's brilliant. Yeah. He's special. Well, a couple of years ago, a number of years ago, a very well-known, world-famous Ivy League school was found to be giving out A's like they were water. Really? Why? Because it makes them look great. Think about it. Our kids are so brilliant. They're all making, they're straight A students, all of them, when they weren't. End of argument. <laughs> I'm not going to name the school. Yeah. But it happened a number of years, about four or five years ago, maybe a little earlier. But, uh, you, know, uh, you have scandal no matter where you turn. Yeah. Why can't you have fairness and honesty? I, I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, there, uh, there are parents that feel their, their child is entitled because they say so or because they have a, you a lot of money. You just had a key word. What are any of us, quote, entitled to? Well, uh, under, if you're an American, uh, if you got a constitution... Well, you've got certain constitutional rights. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, yeah. But you said the parents and entitlement. Aside from that, yeah, aside from parents your constitutional with money, rights, parents with money, what yeah. are you entitled to? And Nothing. why, if you think so, and why not, right. if you think opposite? I don't know. I've heard, I've heard parents uh, uh, yell at the teachers or the principal saying, well, why is my child not doing well in school? Well, let it's me like, interrupt you too. A friend of mine, uh, being from my town, Ridgewood, New Jersey, he was manager of a very well-known grocery store in Ridgewood, a major chain. Yeah. And he told me one day, he said, Billy, you can't. Imagine the stuff I overhear in the aisles primarily. It's not the men, it's the women, the wives. They are horrible, cutthroat, backstabbing. They talk to so and so, so and so, Bob. When the woman walks away, go, I would never let my child go to that school. Things like this. This is what it's about. You know, a friend of my sister, uh, when she lived in Hasbro Heights, uh, she, she rented an apartment. She had children. They went to Hasbro Heights, New Jersey school system. Uh, they were not homeowners. The parents in high school will not let their kids play with her kids because they were not original Hasbrookites people, because they weren't homeowners. Well, you, you believe how if, that, if my wife thought like that, I'm not married, but if my wife thought like that, are you proud of yourself? Your shit's going to stop right now. You don't ever treat people like this. That to me is pure ignorance yeah. and about as low of a low life as you can be. So they are, what they're trying to say in society is that they're better than other people based outside, on the fact that because of their money, how much outside. money is Yeah. Yeah, that makes you better. It seems more and more when we hear these stories, it seems more the dollar sign, the more you have, the more of a moron you become. Seems like it, more bigoted, you know? more, more, bi yeah. more biased. You look down on others. I don't understand. Yeah. Yeah. What does that mean where we're headed? Down the tubes, I would say. Yeah, based yeah. on monetary gain. That's like somebody getting uh, married and, uh, as, as, and, and treating a love relationship like it's a, a, a sales job with a quota. So the husband loses his job and gets laid off. So what does that mean? You don't love him anymore? You want to leave him? That happens. You know that. That does happen. Yeah, that's why I'm bringing it when up. When the man uh, loses a job, the wife leaves all the better, better fields, greener pastures, as they say. Yeah, so what he's not you? the he's not the so-called providing breadwinner anymore. Was that what you expected when you took uh, the oath to marry? The vows, yeah. The vows. To marry? 
breadwinner now, uh, people can make you sick. That's but my you'd final be saying. You'd be surprised how a lot of, <clears throat> of women that are married in America have that attitude. Where if the man, uh, the, the gravy train stops and he he do, he does he can't pay the bills and he doesn't have that income, which, which is which is understandable because, and I'm being facetious, because they'll be young forever. Yeah, you your hips will never get better, young lady. Right, you'll always look young. You'll never get wrinkled. Hey, hot shot, you've got a short time span here. So I hope what goes around comes around. You get yours in return. You you deserted your husband or vice versa or whatever. Good. Well, Let's look, see how, you look, get how, look how short a woman's modeling career is. She's uh, up, she, she's over the hill. Very very few, like a Cindy Crawford or what have you, can maintain their looks and yeah. stay into their forties or what have you. You know. So what do uh, they bring to the yeah. table? If if they cut a man off for something petty and something mm -hmm. superficial and shallow, what do they bring to the table? Well, that's why when a girl does this to a guy, I love her. You say, I wish. I wish fatness upon you. And wrinkles. I curse you. Well, whatever. Age, age quickly yeah. and ungracefully, right. please. Well, whatever happened to equality? Does equality mean they, have, they want to be better? When you're young, it's lip service, Jimmy. Everybody says everything when they're young. When it comes to making money, they want equality. Mm, yeah, money can really change a lot of different but things. But do they really want to be equal across the board? And don't get me wrong, there's some wonderful men and women out there that do stand by their spouse through trouble with their children, with cancer, through each other's cancer, or, a, or any and all other illnesses, too. And being broke. There, there are a lot, and, and financial problems. There are a lot of wonderful, but there's an awful lot of horrible as well. So let's be fair on both sides here. Yeah. Okay, so that's the way we look at it. Okay. All right, William H. Morrow the third. It's great having you again Thanks this for week for everybody. our show. I would like to say bye-bye, but I'd be happy if this was Martini. So bye-bye. Till next time. Yes. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we are back. Back from break and back from my little visit with uh, voiceover artist William H. Morrow III. Thank you very much for our show, William H. Morrow. And um, um, we basically uh, spoke about, and you heard it, Dr. Bill, um, uh, how modern parents spoil and coddle their children and insist that their child is special. My child is special, so therefore they yell at the coach, they yell at the umpire if their child is not treated special in a special way. And the fact is, not every child is special. Some kids are not cut out for college or Ivy League schools or, or are to be big stars in professional sports. Some kids are just not cut out for greatness. And parents do not want to accept that fact. And uh, then we spoke about marriage for the wrong reason. <laughs> how people, you know, women would marry uh, uh, for uh, as long as the man produces. It's almost like love is like a sales job with a quota. You know, and if the man is the breadwinner and he produces, then they love them. And if the man becomes broke, some women just split. And what about cultures like... Splitsville. The Arabs. Well, we... You think they marry for love? Uh... How about ancient people? Doesn't India do that too? You mean the dowry? No, Paying the not dowry? dowries. I'm just talking about people. Do you think cultures where they have women as second-class citizens marry for love? 
No, they're, 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 they're like... Maybe that's why they had to give them away or something. They're like a possession. You know, choose but the mate. But don't they treat women like they're possessions in these cultures? Yes. Cat... Uh, uh, what, what the... What Livestock? The, uh, what, what the hell is the... Uh, uh, the word... Uh, it escapes me at the moment. Having a senior moment. They're like their possessions. Cattle. Cattle. Their possessions. Chattel. Chattel. Their possessions. Chattel. Their possessions. Yeah. Second class citizens. Yeah. The the uh, um, the uh, Islamic extremists and uh, some many countries. I think in India with the arranged mar pre arranged marriages, but the guy can do anything he wants. But you know the double standard. The women can't. They you know they really have very little rights. Uh, and they've been kept down, they, they're not educated, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The opportunities are not presented to them. Right. Now there are no them. opportunities, equal rights. And, oh, by the way, I learned something very interesting. Uh, are you, you're familiar with that ridiculous commercial about a diamond being forever and, you know, the Jared commercial with the engagement, yeah, engagement ring. Did you know that the concept of the uh, diamond engagement ring is only like about a hundred years old? And it was created by De Beers Mining Company. Well, they've done a damn good job. Interesting how that ties in together. That the tradition of, of, uh, 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 of suckering a man into spending thousands of dollars on a diamond engagement ring, the custom started and was created by a corporation, the De Beers Mining Company, and uh, and 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 it is a known fact that diamonds are not technically a precious gem because there are so many diamonds mm -hmm. in South Africa that they control the exportation of these diamonds to just to the keep the, yeah. just to keep the price up. And uh, also the the people that mine the diamonds in Africa for De Beers are are the poor local people that are treated like slaves and are are get are paid next to nothing to to mine these diamonds well, for, the, the, for the big fat cats that own the mine De Beers Mining Company. Real nice, real nice racket they got going, huh? Yes. When they can do it, they do it. Hey, it's same thing with uh, with uh, the, the, the East India Company and uh, the uh, the banana. What, what was that one? Uh, uh, they get the um, they sew up the uh, monopoly. They can charge and, what the and, hell they want. And do you think the government of South Africa doesn't come down on the beers with with heavy taxes because maybe the politicians of South Africa are perhaps paid off by the De Beers mining company do you think that's well, of course they're paid off they're all, all politicians are paid off if they take contributions otherwise they would make De Beers uh, compensate the government of South Africa for exploiting their people and their mines look as long as you are going to rely on an income tax for your government money, right. then it is fair to tax those who have the most. It only makes sense. It's only fair. And the, the more you ha make, the more you pay. Correct. And the, the less you make, the less you pay. Correct. And if you're a poor folk, then you don't pay. But if you're a poor folk, there must be something in your country that would help you to not become poor folk for your entire life. And we right. don't have that. Oh, we have opportunity, don't we? Yeah. No, we well, don't. Not, not for the masses, not for the mainstream, there's no opportunity. <clears throat> There's only opportunity for the for the the people on top. That's correct. As the Tesla movies and Tucker, a man is machine. These kind of movies show it very clearly. Oh yeah. That the br the brilliant person has to grovel, grovel and kiss the ass of of the 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 money bags. Oh, and speaking of the documentaries that you see on cable once in a while. Uh, explaining 
what went on during the Industrial Revolution of the United States. All the shenanigans that went on back then with your J.P. Morgans and Rockefeller, they're very educational as well. Of course. And I'm sure they're on YouTube. But the trouble is, like, these, the people who should, there are, let me put it in a more uh, different vein. There are movies, which I consider classics. Okay. Which I consider that if a person, a, a young man, a young woman of today, has never seen, is lacking in education. Such movies as Brave New World, the original, Day the Earth Stood Still. Soil and Green. Soil and Green, etc., etc. There's a message in them. There's, exactly. There are important messages 1984. in 1984 movies. 1984. Yes. But who the hell sees them today? No one. No one. No one. The Twilight Zone episodes. That too. All of them have very valuable messages. That too. You know, um, it's like, um, it's, well, anytime there's a Twilight Zone marathon on and there's other marathons, most people tell me they watch the Twilight Zone yeah, marathon yeah, yeah. and forfeit the other marathons. Uh -huh. That's how popular Rod Serling, you know, is with even the young generation, you know, but... Um, well, as I say, if the young generation hasn't seen those movies that I was talking about, I consider them lacking in education. Well, I, important uh, education. Well, it's without a doubt that uh, kids are being lied to in their school textbooks. Everything we, everything we were Ooh. taught... Everything we were taught growing up is a lie. Exactly. I mean that that's obvious, you know. And uh, and the funny thing is, it's it's the taxpayers' money that pays for those lying textbooks. Yeah, unfortunately, though, they go to Texas to be okayed. You know. So people grow up into being suckered. Uh, well, we uh, talked about it the other week. In, Remember the the the, yeah. the, the, the test. In one of those southern states, mm -hmm. where behemoth in the in the Bible is, uh, 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 the kid has to circle a dinosaur, or the earth is only six thousand years old. Listen, that's the stuff that's being taught. I am sure that these video games that are pushed, these violent video games that are pushed for kids to buy, based on like wars and the military, it's it's all to groom them. Training. For, for training for when they become 18, 19, what have you, they leave high school and they become suckered into joining the military after they have been lied to by their recruiters, recruiter office. And they learn to fly drones to kill innocent people. Well, the drones are unmanned, but anyway, they, they'll, well, they'll know right. how to, op yeah, but they'll, exactly. because of the video games, they will know how to operate they the drone very monitor. well. Yes. I was lied to by the Navy recruiter. I'm I'm a witness to that man. He, he told me a lot of tall fish All tales. Fish tales, a lot of <laughs> tall tales. He told me a lot of lies, and they were lies. He he. I guess they have a quota. They of, have a quota. Just like a cop has a quota to write tickets. That's correct. Although they deny it. Right. And, and a lot of men really have a quota if they get serious with a woman, especially if she's younger and she wants children, you know. Mm. They, they, have, they put all the responsibility on the man's back, and as long as he produces, just like working for a corporation, as long as he produces and brings home the so-called bacon, then he's a wonderful man and he, he's loved. As soon as he's... He lacks material possessions and moolah, and he's, he becomes uh, broke or laid off or what have you. You know, uh, then he, just like a homeless person, you're worthless. Well, there was a... You lack value. There was a video on uh, Facebook a couple of days ago where these celebrities were acting out homeless people on the street. Yeah. And their friends just passed them by. Just passed them by. 
you, did you know that recently a, a, a woman, a, a newswoman or an actress, she made believe she was a pregnant woman in New York City to do, to, to, uh, to perform a, a test and see if New Yorkers are really that rude and, and uh, are the rudest people in the world. You know what I mean? And, and it, I think it, the test proved... What was the test? It, it was a test of how New Yorkers would react to somebody who was friendly or needed help. I didn't see it yet. I just, there, it's, in the, it's in the advertisement phase now. It's, they're promoting it where they, there's a, this psychological test to see just how rude New Yorkers are. You know, and... Uh, they're pretty rude. I know if you're, if you're lying on the sidewalk motionless, they'll step right over you. And, no, and that was already done. And nobody called 911 on their cell phones. But well, sometimes. You can go back to the Genovese, the Kitty Genovese thing, when she was screaming and yelling, getting killed. Nobody went to uh, call the yeah. cops. No one went to, to their windows. No one went to her defense. Now, okay, on, oca on occasion, there are some very good, some. Good Samaritans yes, in, there are. In, in the New York They'll City. Run in, like Cory Booker, he ran into a burning building or whatever. No, no, I'm talking about Manhattan dwellers. Yeah. In the New York City subway system, there are some excellent Good Samaritans that come to people's rescue. Jump and they down have, on the track and get them out. Yeah. Get them out, pull mm -hmm. them off, or somebody's being uh, attacked by some drug crazed uh, mm -hmm. bum, you know, or whatever. Yeah, though, no, people. In the subway, people s tend to stick together more, but you know. But it, it, all in all, uh, it's like two Timothy in the Bible, baby. You know, New Yorkers generally just don't want to get involved. And they don't care, yeah. you know. And it's sad, but um, um, so getting, getting back to that test, uh, there was a woman in a spa in a you know like a Planet Fitness. Yeah. You know, where you exercise and everything? Yes. And <clears throat> she was in there, and they kicked her out because she didn't uh, adhere to their dress code. Dress she, code. she must have had her midriff bare. Isn't that what chicks and, do in a gym? And they told her, said, well, your belly's sticking out. Well, she's... And she told them, I'm pregnant. They kicked her out. He, she, they didn't want her to arouse too many men in the, in the gym and distract them? Or maybe give the give it a bad impression. A big belly sticking out there, you know, with a kid in there. Oh, I get it. Uh, you know, they have a certain dress code that you must adhere to. Uh, to well, I mean, if I was in her position, I would wear a very loose linen well, they want her to put on a cover up my bulging pregnant belly. <laughs> they wanted her to put on a t-shirt. I think they they uh, uh, they uh, was going to give her a t-shirt. Yeah, I think a loose, uh, uh, an extra large loose cotton t-shirt is very comfortable for a woman. You know, uh, in 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 the summertime to wear as a nightgown or 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 to work out in. The, the key is comfort when you're exercising. You want a loose, um, loose as a goose, a loose garment. Ho you know, hopefully it's a, a type of linen, cotton linen, and you you need comfort and you need uh, to get air under you know under under your garment, you, so you don't feel hot. However, and you and you have. Uh, you have a very uh, loose range of motion when you're exercising. Very However, important. Then we come back to the freedom issue. Today, corporations have too much power. They even need to tell you how to eat, how to dress, how to shit, how to do anything. Oh yeah. Okay. The company, the so-called company or corporate manual is uh, has is like a little mini constitution in a dictatorship if you work for the corporation you are you are it's not a democracy anymore you know and uh of course they've gotten away with all this because they pay off our politicians and you numbskulls keep on re-electing them yeah well they're not our politicians 
They're the corporations and the wealthiest right. politicians. But, but, Not ours. But the people, That's the problem. But people keep on being suckered into the lies. That's correct. Believing the lies. That's correct. That's great. You know, like the... Uh, Just like the Bundys. Like the Bundys. They pretend they're something else than what they are. And all these people out west and down south, these these uh, uh, these uh, country folk, these teabaggers that still believe all this flag-waving Yankee doodle dandy patriotism, blah, 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 blah. Well, speaking about that... Meanwhile, the politicians, our leaders are not patriotic. Speaking about that, the other day... When the uh, Bureau of Land Management cops were over there trying to get Bundy to uh, pay up, here wrote in these militia people with flags. Oh yeah, they had flags. They hate the American government, but they got flags. Because the American government is not what they want it to be, perhaps? Correct. Correct. You see, we, we don't have this flag here because uh, um, because we agree with teabaggers and the Republicans. We have this flag here for the way the United States is supposed to be. A fair United States, you know. It's uh, a symbol. The original 13 colonies when they won their independence, you know, except they kept slaves back then. We don't agree with that, of course. But instead of riding in with American flags, yeah. you should have rode in with Confederate flags. Yeah. You know? If they're Come right on. if they're right wingers. Yeah. Sure. But this is this is what conservatives do. They they are what you call they carry two contradictory thoughts in their head at the same time. See? That's why yeah. they never they can never learn the truth. Yeah, there's two contradictory yeah. thoughts. You know, plus when it's when they it's, hate the government, but they like the yeah. flag. Plus when it's waving, it's a, it's a very pretty flag. You know, when it waves, looks good on video. This guy is. This is how I really feel. See this pirate flag, the Jolly Roger. I agree with pirates, and I agree with Mr. Anonymous over here. The Robin Hood theory. Steal from the, the greedy, filthy rich and give it to the poor. Well, if you tax them, you don't have to steal from and, them. And the reason why I feel, even though Hollywood demonizes pirates, I think uh, what pirates were doing is they were stealing from the, uh, uh, from the king, the kings of Spain or, or, they or England. They were taking from those who already had. That were hogging everything for themselves. To the, help uh, them. The um, a monarchy, they were stealing from the monarchy and taking away from which they stole from everywhere, everywhere they went. Whoever said Military. that the king owns everything? He, he, only, he only claims to own everything because he has an army doing his bidding. Well, they... they or Navy. It was the divine right of kings. They were put in place by God. Divine right. Divine right. Oh, of so kings. so to say they were put in place by God means that the Bible agrees with what the monarchy does. The Bible. And the king. God did not want Israel to have a king. God was their king. Well, God wasn't too crazy about Nimrod. King Herod became the first king. That was Babylon, right? He. He had many cities, but he was the first king, and that's when men had power over other men. That was before Nebuchadnezzar, and Nimrod was like the first king. He set himself up as the first king. Israel, ancient Israel, was given Saul, but God told him, he's going to be bad. He did, God did not want them to have a king, but they... The people, the hard-necked Israel, the Israelites, yeah. they wanted a king, so they got Saul. And Saul taxed their asses up the high heaven, and etc. Just like the middle class is being strangled now with taxation. And of course, the uh, the, the wealthy are hogging everything and not ta not paying taxes. 
So nothing has really changed. You know? Well, the Koki brothers, I'm sure they like a divine right of kings. They should be kings. Then they can do what the hell they want. Could you they don't have to lobby. you imagine how insecure somebody would have to be to be that power hungry and that greedy and that and, and required especially to, with all that money yeah I mean you don't you would think they have enough but no none of these people seem to have enough There's never enough it's never enough when it's a disease it's a disease uh, okay it's a disease with a lot of good people suffering because of it uh-huh you know uh -huh. wake up people wake up wake up and, and learn to go outside the box, outside the two-party system. Okay, you let know, us... You know what Wilhelm Reich we said. we got to sink our teeth into these readings, sir, because time is a-flying. You know what Wilhelm Reich said, don't you? What? He said the entrance to the box is also the exit. Don't let the door hit you in the ass on the oh, way yeah. out. <laughs> the entrance to the box... Is also the exit. Is also the exit. So in, other, in other words, there's no exit on the other side. It means you're not trapped inside. You can go out the way you came in. In other words, you have choices. Yeah. That's what he was trying to say. Ten years of U.S. data suggests cholesterol-lowering statins are giving patients a license to pig out. Oh, brother. It's, it's like the great news about cocoa being an antioxidant and, and somebody eating cases of Hershey bars. Calorie and fat intake increased among statin users during this decade. An indication that many patients might be abandoning heart-healthy lifestyles and assuming that drugs alone will do the trick. This is why I always say that diet is the hub of the wheel. Diet is the foundation to good health, not the pill. Not even the vitamin pills. You always start with the diet. Well, it's like uh, people with di uh, two, uh, type two diabetes. Ah, oh, well, I'm on the, I'm on a pill. Uh, I take insulin, so I can do anything I want. No, you can't do anything you want. Exactly. You have to work with the vitamin or the mineral or the herbal extract or the medication. You have to work with it, and that means proper diet and and, and keeping the strict diet. They said the goals of statin treatment should be to help patients achieve benefits unattainable by other methods, not to empower them to put butter on their steak. Statins may keep cholesterol low even if people eat less healthy food and slack off on exercise. I have to disagree on the butter statement. Butter's, butter is actually healthy for you. It's sugar. But I never put it on steak. Why well, put butter on steak if steak already has saturated fat to make it taste good? There's no need for butter on steak. But I'm just saying, butter in general is not the culprit. It's the sugar. And the margarine. Well, that's trans fat. That's yeah. poison. But these people think they're doing, they're doing good by eating margarine instead of butter. You see, the information is out there to be educated, to be an educated consumer. But the it's propaganda is stronger. But they don't, but how come we don't, are not affected by the propaganda? We must be real superior people. Or we were given the opportunity to come into contact with the decent people who were telling the truth at an important time in our lives. I listened to Carlton Fredericks okay. as a kid. I listened to Robert Atkins. I listened to Gary No. I listened to all these people. I, I, I read, I have the, the right books at home, and now I pay attention to the right info on the internet. Mm -hmm. But I make it my business to research, and I choose to believe the truth. But, for instance, WLR is only a what? Is it a 50,000 watt station? Well, it's not Whatever as... Whatever it is, it only reaches a certain amount of people. Right. WABC probably reaches more. Yeah. Well, that's a 50,000 watt station. But the point is, any radio station, <clears throat> and a person that's on it or something, is only a regional thing. It only affects so many people. Yes. So unless you get a national show, 
then right. you go nationwide yes. and you reach more people. Like the so uh, if the, you listen to Carl to Frederick, I mean he was only on W O R. Yeah, Com compared to that that diary of the mouth uh, fat idiot uh, Rush Limbaugh, uh -huh. he's national. Yes, yes he is. You know. Uh, now where was I? Uh, little, little, little. But those bad habits can contribute to obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, and other problems that are bad for the heart. Mm -hmm. Bad, yeah. Bad. The study was published online Thursday in the Journal of the American Medical Association, Internal Medicine. Dr. Rita Redberg... <laughs> The journal's editor said the study raises concerns of a potential moral hazard of statin use. In addition to already known potential side effects, risks, including muscle aches and diabetes. And I might add that uh, statins deplete CoQ10, which is an energy provider for people. So no wonder they get weak muscles yeah. and low energy and etc. on statins. Plus, who knows, you may be lowering your cholesterol too much and therefore you're not building up your proper hormones like your sex hormones, testosterone. Which rely on, um, on dietary cholesterol and some saturated fats. There are nutrients in some saturated fats, you know. Yeah. You know, like a stearic acid is a, a coconut oil is very medicinal. Uh, um, uh, you know what's good for energy boost? Uh, uh, a, a good mega strength sublingual vitamin B12 that you put under your tongue and you 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 let it. Carnitine too. Carnitine for the mitochondria, the little ATP factories in the cells. Are you talking about carnitine or carnosine? Carnitine. Teen. Carnosine is for the telomeres. Mm -hmm. To help you live longer. Yeah, extend the telomeres. Yeah. Statins provide a false reassurance. People seem to believe that statins can compensate for poor dietary choices and a sedentary lifestyle. Yeah. The researchers examined the 1990 till 2010 government health surveys involving 28,000 adults ages 20 and older. Physical exams, blood tests, and reported their food intake. The portion who used statins steadily increased from 8% in the first year to 17% in the final year. Statin users in the first year consumed on average 2,000 calories daily. Those in the final year consumed 2,192 calories daily. Oh, yeah. Average fat intake also increased from 72 grams daily to 82 grams daily. I, um, I am more in favor of carbohydrate counting than I am about the... Uh, caloric restriction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Experts generally recommend no more than 77 grams daily for adults consuming 2,000 calories daily. The increase was seen in total fat intake and saturated fats, the least healthy kind. Average body mass index among statin users increased from 29 just below the cutoff for obesity to 31, or one point higher than that cutoff. Diabetes also increased. 29% of statin users had it in 2010 versus 22% in the study's first year. A link between statin use and diabetes has been documented previously. But reasons for the trend in the study are uncertain. Calories and fat intake were lower among statin users than non-users early on. But by the final years, 
that difference vanished. The study doesn't prove that statin use prompted patients to slack off mm. or that there is a true link between the drugs and the changes seen, but the researchers said the results raise troubling questions. If, for example, the average statin user is eating 192 more calories daily than 10 years ago, that could translate into many extra pounds each year, unless activity levels also increase. The study certainly doesn't mean that everyone responds this way, but the concern is that people who are on statins ought to be particularly careful about how many calories they eat and what kinds of food they eat. They don't appear to be doing that. Yeah. Okay, you, you finished with that? I am. I have a comment. Um, for those that are diabetics, um, for those that have hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar, and for those that are overweight, that have excess body fat, what I suggest is put all the calorie counting aside, put all the registered dietitian mumbo jumbo aside, and simply acquire or print out a good, uh, glycemic index chart or more than one of them that um, is comprehensive enough to include most foods and the uh, the foods with the highest number on the glycemic index chart simply do not buy and consume eat only the foods with the lower numbers and uh, you will do just fine and and, and do not <laughs> Do not sacrifice uh, essential fatty acids because you need them to uh, for not only for your overall health but to stabilize blood sugar. And that's all I have to say about that. Fine. We have time for one more, right? I hope so. Well, just look at the clock. It's four o'clock. And then one more, that's it. Oh, what the cuddle hormone oxytocin can do oh, for God. you. Oh, God. This is about cuddling? This is about Republicans. Oh, oh. Who are missing oxytocin. Oh, okay, okay. How many times on this show have we brought this up? Oh, you usually do quite Thank often. Thank you very much. And this will because they are. Maybe, well, they're, maybe they're just under uh, a, a demonic influence. No, it cannot be just psychic. No. It's in the heart. Well, Their heart is involved. Satan. They're Satan's tools in the end times. Satan is a psychic influence. He broadcasts through the air into the mind that is receptive. Receptive. But the heart. Yeah. The heart. That is the man. The heart is the man. That's the character. That's the... Like Clive, that's the Clive and Clive Archie Bundy. Bunkerville uh, Bundy yeah. said he's speaking from the heart. Yeah, but I'll he wasn't. Say they, I'll say their son. But, 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 but he isn't now because he's trying to hide all that. But he already See? spilled the beans. Yes, yes. The, the jig is up. How many times, though, the two Republicans get caught having spilled beans? Oops. And My hand is caught in a cookie jar. And like, they get uh, away with it. Like, um, what's his name that was secretly recorded? Um, Mitt Romney. Mitt, Mitt Romney. Mitt and Romney that was recorded saying what he said. And then he, like, backed off and... Oops. Oops. Yeah. Like, got caught. New reports show that this brain chemical, long famous for helping moms and newborns bond, does far more than that for women and men. It boosts happiness, fine-tunes communication skills, improves everyday relationships, and chases away anxiety right. and stress. As a take-a-dose and feel-better medication 
oxytocin's not ready for prime time. Right. But someday, this neural peptide produced in the brain's hypothalamus yeah. could be the basis for new treatments for everything from autism, eating disorders, serious mental health problems. In fact, preliminary studies indicate that a nasal spray of oxytocin can increase activity in brain areas involved with understanding and response to social cues in kids with autism. Yeah, not to mention uh, dead, the dangerous uh, effects of vaccines on kids that cause autism. And that it can dial down obsessive thoughts about food and body size in people with anorexia. It may even help ease drug addiction. Fortunately, there are natural ways to boost your oxytocin levels. Attention all Republicans! Yeah, but... <laughs> Hear what I say now? So what you're saying is that um, a lack of this hormone in certain individuals tends to make these people conservative Republicans. It not makes the other people way around. not want to bond. You mean with antisocial behavior and, te correct. and tendencies? Okay. That's correct. And selfishness. Selfishness and less love in their heart. And more, more me, 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 me in their heart. That's correct. Ah, I dig where you're coming from now, Dr. Oh. Bill. I dig it. Rising levels help. Where am I? Help dads bond with their kids. Right. And bolster a male's partner's loyalty to his mate. Ah, I see the pattern here. And a surge of oxytocin increases both men's and women's trust and resilience promotes deeper sleep and reduces depression. A blast of the hormone also encourages you to connect with your mate, friends, and children, especially when times are tough. Okay, okay. Such closer connections and social support open the door to a long list of health benefits including stress reduction, better heart health, stronger immunity, more efficient digestion, and even a longer life. Very good article. So here's how to boost your levels of this feel better, love better, live better hormone. That was my next question. Go, go right ahead. Number one, more sex. Yeah, but you need a willing partner to have all this extra sex. <laughs> no, you don't. You, you can't have a soldier with nothing to shoot at, you know? Yes, you can. Oh, I get it. Thank you. Uh, uh, Thank you. Not, 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 not a lot of fun, but uh, I get it. <clears throat> We're not in it for fun. We're in it for health benefits, number one. Yeah. That's what sex is all about. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's Between the sheets, intimacy. Salt and pepper releases a rush of oxytocin. Set your alarm clock to ring 30 minutes earlier for some morning affection to enjoy feeling more loving and bonded and relaxed all day. Well, if you have what about brushing your teeth? Well, if you have kids, you have to make an appointment for that. Again. Brushing your teeth? Before you're in the early morning when you get up and having sex. Come on. Well, Wake up and smell the What coffee. about people that brush their teeth before bed? Don't say me in dry mouth all night. What are you kidding me? Well, definitely, uh, definitely uh, uh, do something like uh, yeah. gargle with Listerine or hydrogen peroxide. Disinfect your mouth. Because if your mouth is open while you're sleeping, I guess bacteria starts growing. Plaque is bacteria, so on and so forth. Longer hugs. Longer hugs? Hold on longer next time you hug your mate, your kid, your parent, or a good friend. 
Now, if you're pissed off at that person, you can give them a professional wrestling style bear hug. I don't think that rises the oxytocin. No, I, I think it constricts breathing. <laughs> <laughs> a top oxytocin researcher says an extended embrace aimed for 20 seconds cues oxytocin's release from your pituitary gland. In other words, if you have a if you have a happy peace of mind if you're in a happy peace of mind state like if you're doing something that's positive and enjoyable it will increase the oxytocin is there a connection you think between uh, endorphin productions uh, and ox oxytocin or just or just a positive state of mind no it's a hormone but uh, is there, are there any nutrients that increase production? We didn't get there yet. Oh, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Hey, you're getting ahead of Dr. Mehmet Oz. Oh, God, is that who wrote this, the fuck? Him and Dr. Uh, Mike Roizen. Dr. Oz is a, a cardiac surgeon, and he's pro-pharmaceutical, and he's pro-orthodoxy. Oh, but he did. That's it. But Oprah, Oprah took a Wait liking to him. Wait a minute. He did bring, uh, uh, what's that, Garcinia Gomaja? Yeah, Garcinia Cambogia. For losing yeah. weight. So he, maybe he's starting to accept uh, some things. Some things, some parts of nutrition, uh, medical nutrition, more than, than the past. Let's mm. put it that way. Yeah. A mini massage. Next time you pass one of those massage kiosks at the mall, <laughs> those are le those are legitimate massage kiosks, right? Or your mate or a pal offers to knead your shoulders, a say yes. A pal. <laughs> a 15-minute back massage, boosted oxytocin levels for lucky volunteers in one recent University of California oh. San Diego study. Oh yeah, it'll boost something, all right. Hey! While those who simply relaxed in a quiet room for 15 minutes missed out on this pose. Yeah. Quiet support. You got a relationship? Soak in it. If the other person is su supporting you and cares about your well-being and, and, and respects your passions in life. Spending your just 10 minutes of quiet time holding hands with your partner can raise oxytocin levels. It can raise something else too. <laughs> yeah, you don't always have to gab when you're with your significant other. You know, you, 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 silence is golden sometimes. It, Medi meditation is like that, you know. It can vaporize stress hormones and reduce your blood pressure. Vaporize? Vaporize. Go bye-bye. For best results, turn off the television, silence the cell phone, and tell the kids you're taking a break. Oh, yeah, and get away from your damn smartphone and, uh, and that texting that people do all the time. Getting a blast of oxytocin doesn't completely depend on skin-to-skin -skin contact. Giving and receiving support and empathy is an oxytocin-boosting experience. See, now I understand why Gary Noel prefers to uh, do his studying and research and reading and what have you in, a, in an apartment with no television or internet turned on. Movies that touch your heart. What touches your heart? Movies are going to raise your oxytocin. Well, the ones that touch you. Oh heart. no, I can't. I can't watch no chick, chick flick. flick dramas, Lifetime Channel crap. No way. I like a good adventure movie, science fiction, horror. You know. Uh, Turns out your brain. Action film. Yeah. Your brain reacts to fictional characters on the big screen just as it would to people in the real world. Or comedies. Or and you can use your imagination to your advantage. Yeah. I like, I like educational documentaries the most. Skip the screwball comedy 
and the latest disaster flick. Watching an emotionally compelling movie can raise oxytocin levels 47%. You tell this person, this wimp, this wussy, to mind their own damn business about the watching the chick flick. It switches on empathy. Yeah, and it makes you depressed, too. Empathy. Feeling sad does not make you depressed. Sure it does. All Most artists go through what they call their blue period. No, it makes you... And they're very productive. It, may, it reminds you of your own problems in life. So what? That's what causes people to be innovative. And things like that. Skip the... the get the hell out of here. All right, finish up. Tweeting finish up. and texting. Updating your Facebook page. Oh, well, there's too much of that, of course. Connecting via social media may also trigger an uptick in oxytocin. A discovery that social networkers have dubbed digital oxytocin. Oh, yeah. This can be a nice bonus. <clears throat> but don't let internet socializing take the place of in-person contact with your pals. People today, especially younger generation people, have this uh, like virtual reality, antisocial lifestyle yeah. between texting instead of talking to somebody on a telephone or face to face, and uh, playing all these uh, realistic three-dimensional video games, and you know what I mean? It's like it's they've all created a virtual world. They have their they've created their own virtual world which is like a cop-out for cowards. Joining a choir. Reviving your garage band. There you go. Singing in a group. Your and listening to relaxing music instead of the heavy metal crap that Wait somebody listens to. Wait a minute. Who's saying? Who's the wussy that's putting down heavy metal rock? Let me tell you something. Uh, uh, um, Pursuing your passions in life in terms of hobbies and interests is an, is an outstanding positive influence on, on your, how you feel in your, in your life. And, 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 but of course having a significant other that supports your passions and your interests is important too. And a lot of people have significant others that do nothing about complain about your passions and interests, unfortunately. Having an adventure. Do something exciting and new with your main squeeze or best friend. Yeah, unless your main squeeze is your lemon as you're squeezing it into your ice water. Sharing thrills from dancing to the amusement park rides and more no, 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 can no. make you feel more connected. Amu amusement park rides will make me lose my dinner. Not the bumper cars. I have cars. a very sensitive stomach. Not the bumper cars. No, nah, well, I could handle the kiddie rides. No. I, I used to ride. Bumper cars I can handle. I used to ride in the helicopters. The kiddie helicopters. Uh, they're off. a piece of cake. <laughs> they're a piece of cake. But wow, I got on one of those uh, modern world, style. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I got on one. It was, a, it was a pirate ship. It was a huge pendulum. And... I was sitting in the pirate ship, oh and boy. eventually... Oh, that rocking thing, it yeah. It went up, and, and it, it goes went right up, around. it went up, up. When I got off it, I lost everything I ate. You tossed your cookies. I ran right for the nearest bush. Oh, my God. Uh, anyway. Linda loves roller coasters. And that was the last time I went on a ride like that. I'd never go on a roller coaster. Don't. Never. Plus, accidents do happen on these rides. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Uh, 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 da uh, dancing to amusement park rides, uh, from, from dancing to amusement park rides and more, can make you feel more connected to one another and has been shown to boost oxytocin levels. Doing things that you both enjoy together, regardless what it is, is should boost your oxytocin um, oxy, oxytocin levels. So that's that's it. That's a wrap. That's a wrap.
So now, I hope people can understand more clearly the difference between the normal human being and the conservative. Or it the, is a hormonal thing along with the psychic problem. Or the sociopath, which often is a conservative. Some of them are, definitely. Yeah, I mean, uh, Absolutely. Uh, um, not being able to distinguish right from wrong and feeling no remorse. For what do you what call one do? of those uh, militia men with their sidearms uh, don't recognize the United States government? And their assault, and and assault rifle with the sidearm. Is that not a sociopath? Do we have to wait around for them to hurt somebody before we call them a sociopath? You know what they are? They are people that watch too much Fox News and listen to too many Republican politicians and believe the they've lies. Been, they've been around before Fox be, News. Believe the lies about President Barack Obama thinking and believing that he created all the problems we have now, not realizing that he inherited everything from G.W. Bush, Dick Cheney, and they believe the lies about President Obama, and they're, of course, racist about a black man being in the White House. And in their uh, hearts, they, they are racist. They, they, they're using President Obama as a scapegoat for what's really going on. They're not, they're not focusing on the source of the problem. But with the oxytocin, we are, we are focusing on the fact that they can only be loyal to their party. Right. They are not really loyal to their wives. No, 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 no. No, but, it's but, a whole different thing. But they're not realizing that it's the it's people like the Koch brothers that are responsible for our problems. People like the Koch brothers, there's others too. Not President Barack Obama. But they choose to attack the black man yeah, in the but, White but House. The, but like I say, that uh, these problems have been here long before Fox News. Fox News is only 15 years old. But the but the attitude of Fox News has it's been, been in here a, in existence for you know for decades for a long time. I'm sure I'm sure the personalities of your Rockefeller and J.P. Morgan were very similar to today's Fox News. Well, t today's uh, uh, Ayn Rand lovers. Same attitude. Ass kissers. Same, same attitude. Thing. There's no altruism. Yeah. There's no oxytocin. Yeah. This is what I'm getting at when well, I say this. Plus, uh, yeah, okay. Their okay, marriages okay. are shams. Yes. Yeah, Their talk of love is a sham. Their talk of, <clears throat> a talk of, um, they love their country. Patriot. Uh, they pa like the flag, but not the country. Patriotism, yeah. It's all fake. It's all sham. It's all garbage. What about the sham of their so-called religious beliefs? And those too. If they cannot, <laughs> if they cannot love a human being, how, are they how can they love an alien? And how can and how can they follow what's really in the Bible? Well, that's the psychic part. Yeah. Now I'm talking. When I talk about oxytocin, I'm talking about the. I the know, physical. I know, but they also they lack they, the ability. But they also profess all the time to be real Christians. Yes, they do, but they lack the ability the ability to be physical, to connect, to bond. That's why they have no empathy for the poor. No empathy and no compassion for the poor. That's correct. Okay, I follow you. All right. Excellent ending to a perfect uh, show this week, and thank you for joining us. Uh, I mean, the weeks go by fast, and so does, oh, the, so does the time. Look at April, it's over already. Yeah, uh, pretty soon, you, as you, I don't know if you can hear the April showers out there now, yeah, but pretty in. soon we will be having May flowers. Actually, the tulips are out. Next door. The tulips are out. T tulips tend to like cool spring weather. Bulbs. I believe. Bulbs. Any bulb, any bulb flower. So anyway, thank you for joining us. Say so long to these people. So long, people. Yeah, right.